Okay, I have something very important to share with you today. It involves two shuffles that sound very similar, but yet they are extremely different, as you shall see. Yet each one in its own right is very much a shuffle worth learning. Okay, so let's go ahead and gather the cards up. Okay, um, now I think it would be a good idea to shuffle the cards. Uh, I don't know how many times we should do it. Um, I don't want you <laughs> falling asleep here. Um, let's see that number two. Uh, straighten these up. Maybe we'll do a third if that's okay. Third and final. Is that okay? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, use an odd number. Now I kind of thought through this. Um, technically any odd number of cards for each of these piles that we'll put out will actually work. Um, but I didn't want anything too small or too big because it'll just be a lot of work if it's too big. So I decided to go with seven. So it's kind of a, a middle ground odd number that I think should work well. So what I'll do is I'll deal out uh, two piles of seven cards. In fact, we'll even do it from different parts of the deck. Three, four, five, six and then maybe seven okay so we have two kind of random piles of seven cards each in fact why don't we go ahead and just kind of mix these the best we can oh sorry about that knocking things all over the place okay very good oh try not to <laughs> call it. well i mean we could mix it with that i suppose but that uh, that would uh, make you suspicious, I guess, or something. Let's just mix these with themselves here really fast. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's gather these up and we'll begin. So we have these two piles of seven cards uh, each. Okay. Now before we kind of begin some of the work involved, I wanted to just drive home a very important point. Okay, and this is something you can check on your own, and it is verifiably true. Okay, so what I've done here, um, I, t I had the cards in order from ace to seven, uh, you know, before I started. Um, same thing here, I had these cards in order ace to seven. And so what I did for each of these, I'm just noticing how off-center I am for all of this today. Sorry about that. Um, so what I did for this one over here, it was ace through seven, and I performed what's called the down under shuffle, or the Australian shuffle. And I'll be performing in a minute, so you'll see what it is. Um, but because I did that, this is the order we got. For this one, I, I had it start out ace through seven, and I performed the under down shuffle. Okay, now those sound similar, but just check out the order here. There's actually not a single card, and unless I'm mistaken, there's not a single card in the same position. As you go through the uh, packet here, these cards have all been moved to different locations from each other, whether it's the down under shuffle or the under down. Okay, So you really need to kind of see that visually. These are very different shuffles. Okay, so and, and like I said, you can check that for yourself if you'd like. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, treat these two piles, these two random piles of seven cards, the same except for this one here, let's say, will perform down under shuffles, and this one here will perform under down shuffles, okay? But in every other sense, these piles will be treated exactly the same way. So the only difference will be down under over here, under down here. And you just saw for yourself a moment ago the different effects those shuffles have on a packet of seven cards. Okay, so this one here, I think we designated it as the down under <laughs> pile. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, so it's down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top, 
Okay, so that's the down under. Uh, this one's going to be under down. So under down, under down, under down, under down, under down, under down. Last one on top. Okay, so we've treated those differently because we performed a down under here and an under down here. Now we're going to treat them the same for a moment. So no difference here. We're going to perform what's called the Klondike Shuffle. This is where you take the top and bottom off as one. Okay, so Klondike Shuffle there. We need to do the same thing here. Klondike pairs of cards to the table until all of the cards have been set down. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to repeat just two more times. So down under on this pile. So down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Whereas here we're doing under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay. And then we're going to perform a final Klondike shuffle. Top and bottom off is one. Until all the cards have been moved from the one hand to the other. Klondike shuffle. The same treatment here. Okay. So where has that brought us? All of these actions. We can, I guess, refer to this as the, the down under pile. And then this one here is the under down pile. Okay, so where have all of those actions done for each of the piles where these piles were treated exactly the same way except for switching out under down shuffling here for down under shuffling here. So let's just see what the universe here has given us with these two random piles of seven cards each. Okay, so I'm just kind of interested to know what's come to the top. That's kind of fun. Seven. See, seven significant here? Well, yeah. Well, of course, this pile here has seven cards, as does this one. Now, surely this won't be a set. Oh, whoa. You've got to be kidding me. We got companion cards from a shuffled deck of cards that you saw shuffled. And then we table washed each of the piles separately. You saw that. And then we went through this down under here, under down here, but in every other way, these two were treated the same. And we know that the down under and under down do very different things to packets of cards, as I showed you, and you can verify. So I don't know about you, but I think that's extremely surprising and unlikely. Oh, now wait a second. What are, what are these cards over here doing? In fact, in some ways they've been in the way the whole time. Uh, let's just find out what these are. Oh, my pad, by the way, is going downhill. I'm sort of out of state, so I'm, I'm <laughs> performing these wherever I can. So sorry about that. Let me move the pad too. See the pad moving? Okay. So if you happen to see cards moving around, it's because I'm on this makeshift performance quote table here. Okay. So what are these two cards? This two there. Two cards that have been sitting in camera view the whole time. Let's just take a look. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> seven of spades and the seven of clubs, as you might imagine. Oh, boy. We saw... Or maybe I saw the future here. I set aside two cards from the deck. I thought, man, I think these two might be important in our future here together. And that's why they were sitting over there. Oh, by the way, why did I have these little pins here? Uh, it's because the cards slide all over on this pad, so they kept sliding. How was I able to pull this off knowing that, in fact... The down, under, and under, down are extremely different ways of mixing the cards. Okay, well, let's quickly talk about that. And you'll be able to do this, you know, right away if you want. Um, and also, I have at least one variation I can show you. I can give you an idea for kind of a different way of doing the ending, okay, if you're interested. 
Okay, so we have, so these are like prediction cards here. So you can just set those off to the side, or, you know, where the spectator maybe can see them. Um, and in fact, you can even have them quite a bit off to the side um, so that the spectator doesn't necessarily think that they're part of the whole performance. But I, I really couldn't do that here without you being suspicious. Okay, so how you begin is you begin with uh, the deck, uh, well mixed, up to a point, <laughs> well mixed, except for the fact that the very top two cards are the red sevens. Okay, well, you might remember, wait a second, he did, he did some riffle shuffling. Yeah, well, I did, but you just retain the top two at the top. It's, it's not too difficult, you know, when they talk about retaining the top stock, it's not too difficult to retain just two cards. If you want to retain five, seven cards or something, that gets really tricky. At least I have a problem with that. I often miss it. Okay, so it's not too hard to retain just two cards at the top. There they are. Okay, so as far as the spectator knows, the cards are randomized. They're well mixed here. Okay, and then what we did was, why well, I explained that it decided to go with and oh by the way when i said that you can do this for any odd number it is true these packets here can be any size they need to be the same size but odd so we could have had 9 11 5 13 17 whatever these just need to be odd size for the procedure i'm going to show you now of course depending on what you choose you might have to come up with a a different way to bring in a second kind of punch, I guess, at the end, like I did here with the black sevens. Um, but that is a true statement. Any odd number will work. Okay, so the, uh, the red sevens on the top. So I just dealt out um, from different places. Just give the illusion that these are truly kind of random, which up to a point they actually are, okay? So all of the cards above the red sevens are quote random. I, I did a genuine shuffle below the top few cards. Okay, but then I did a table wash. So what do you think happened there? Well, with a table wash, it's not too hard to keep track of just one card. I don't know if you've been keeping track of it, but um, the seven's right there. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I said, not too hard to keep track of it. And then I lost, I lost track of it talking to you. Okay, very good. Okay, so yeah, so you just, I'm just keeping, you keep your eye on that seven. Now the spectator is going to be looking all over the place. You're just keeping your eye on that one card, you know, like where it's being moved and so forth. So there it is. Okay, so you just gather up the cards, scoop up these, drop those, and then put that on top. Okay, so, you know, just do some kind of a convincing table wash that keeps, uh, Oh, yeah, I still need to move it to that. Yeah, the table wash is important, by the way, because we're moving the card from the bottom. I guess I really need to emphasize that. From the bottom, uh, we need it on top, not the bottom. Okay, so we actually need it on top. Okay, so go like that. Then the other red seven will be on top. There it is. Okay, so it's on top where it needs to be. Now, let me bring out a write out that will help you uh, quite a bit, actually. Okay, so I've written out in abbreviated form uh, what's going on here, and it's not too hard to follow this, actually. Uh, once I explain to you what T, M, and B stand for, and as you might imagine, T is for top card, M is for middle card, and then B is for bottom card. Okay. So what I'm showing you is I'm showing you some shuffling results from a series I did devoted to odd size packets. So in the description below, I can include a link to the videos that talk about odd size packets and the wonderful things you can do with odd size packets relative to the top middle and bottom cards in relationship to the shuffles that are commonly used today. Okay, so see that in the description below if you want to learn kind of how, how did I even figure this out here. 
essentially just read it off of that diagram that I created for those videos. So, uh, so what this is saying, like maybe for now it's okay. These are just the two. I'll move those. You know how those come in at the end. Okay. So what I'm showing you here, well, first off, I'll remind you, the red sevens are on top of each. Okay. So they're identical in that sense. Okay. So on the left, this is the down under track. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to do down under Klondike, down under Klondike, and you're done. Um, unless you want to do a variation, I'll show you the end there. Um, for the right hand pile, under down Klondike, under down Klondike. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you here, and I don't have a pointer, I guess a pen or something, but um, so we're beginning with in each pile, the card of interest is the asterisk. Um, so those cards of interest are beginning at the top of each. Okay. Now after the uh, down under shuffle, that top card moves to the bottom. Okay. So that's something you can see on the diagram and the description below. Whereas for the under down shuffle, the top card moves to the middle, which is kind of interesting and nice. Okay. Now after a Klondike shuffle, Klondike shuffles leave the bottom card of any packet, even a rod alone. So the bottom card is a fixed point for the Klondike shuffle. If you think about it, you're pulling off top and bottom. Well, the very bottom card is being pulled off first, so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Now, after the Klondike for this under down shuffle packet, it's going to move the card of interest that's in the middle to the top. Okay. And that's something you can check. It does. Okay. But the cool thing is if we now just perform each of those shuffles for, you know, each track here down under and then under down, it brings them to a common location. Okay. So in particular, um, so for the down under, it's going to move this bottom card to the middle. So it's really nice. But the under down track here, card of interest is at the top at the moment. And then another under down will move it to the middle as well. Okay. Now the middle position is a very helpful position relative to the Klondike shuffle because given any odd size packet, the middle card is brought to the top. If you Klondike shuffle the cards, well, that's where we wanted them to be. We wanted the top card to be the card of interest for each of these. And then that was the reveal there. We showed that we had two red sevens and that should be quite a surprise for people because they think the cards are shuffled and randomized and you took cards from different places and then you table washed each pile of seven. It's like nobody could know anything about these cards. Well, that's not quite true. Now, let me quickly just show you the variation that's really quite nice for the for the very last one here. I mean, you can use it other places too. You can use this variation anytime the cards are in the middle and they're only in the middle at the same time as far as steps right here. OK, so it's called R hyphen LR and it says keep odd size piles. So let me just show you. So instead of the final Klondike shuffles, maybe for just variety. So we have the cards of interest in the middle and we do there. Seven of hearts is right in the center. Okay. So what's a repeat LR? This is where you just go left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Retain or keep the odd size pile, the pile with an odd number of cards in it. So three here, four, you just discard, you get rid of those. And then you repeat that one more time, left, right, left, keep the odd size pile, one's odd, two's not. So discard those. And that will bring to quote the top, the very card that you want to reveal in the end. And so doing that for the other pile will also bring, you know, if it's, if that seven is in the middle, like it's supposed to be right here, it will bring that to the top as well. So anyway, this is a fun result. And if you take a look at the uh, videos I have linked below, you can learn more about the amazing things that you can do with odd size piles. If you just know some of the basics of what happens to the top, 
middle and bottom card after certain mixing procedures are performed. Anyway, so thank you again and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Map Magic channel.